That was my version of Blackbird, which I recorded on my new album, This Bird Still Flies. And I want to talk to everyone about some of the different ways that I reharmonized it and why I came up with this arrangement. Obviously, it's a beautiful tune. Uh, the melody is gorgeous. The lyrics are wonderful. And I wanted to try to do justice to the original, but add something fresh to it. So I used all my years of study and harmony to come up with something that uh, that I felt like would lend some freshness to a tune that's, you know, when Paul McCartney recorded it, it was perfect. So I don't need to, to replicate that. So I tried to do something different and keep it fresh. So one of the things you'll notice in the intro, I'm actually using... I'm just playing up a G major scale, harmonized um, all the way up, so. And then I come down, where I'm, I'm basically harmonizing in thirds, which is just a nice, pretty way. So it's sort of, I would say my introduction is sort of semi-classical-ish, or classical-ish, just to set up the tune. I like to, I think it's very important. And then by the time I'm into the, uh, so the melody is, and notice I'm, so there I'm keeping what is basically an upper pedal, you know, I'm changing the notes below the G, and then I come up here, all the way up here. And listen to how much fuller that sounds than if I were to, you know, if I were to do. So. I can harmonize, I keep the open B there. Or I can do the A. So all of these things, and notice, of course, I'm keeping that open D string. That's what we call a pedal point, folks. And that just flushes out the sound, you know, similar similar to the original arrangement, but I'm, I'm doing it on top. And then here... So there I'm really taking some liberty but trying to flesh out the sound. Uh, and I'm just choosing chordal voicings that sound pretty to me. Here is um, what I call a stretchy chord here. The first chord, that's just a C major seven. And with a, I guess I have the, the um, nine and the uh, six in there too, with a high B on top. So that chord is there. It was like an E7 sharp nine, then an A13 flat nine. And then this chord is just an A minor. Some of you might recognize that and I keep the A bass, but I'm adding the B here. This is another stretchy chord, which I talk about in my woodshed session for America. Okay, only it's a different stretchy chord. The, in America, I was using a D. In this case, I've got an A minor, another stretchy chord. And again, if it seems hard to you folks, try it up higher and try to get all of the strength from your fingers, not throwing your bicep into the chord, looking something like that. You wanna, you know, just have it be natural. Thumb is back behind me here as a pivot to keep my hands stable, okay? So, this is a, a little stretchy chord, uh, an A minor chord that I use. And so uh, I keep the A bass and then have the nine. I could have played it like this. There's another way, I mean, I could open. Sometimes I open up the B string and play it on top instead of there, but in this case I played it there. So I've got. So in this. This is a really, this is an interesting chord here, folks. This is a kind of a duality kind of chord. I have an E bass, so it's it's an E minor. But if I didn't have the E bass, listen. It would really, it could also be like a G, because I've got a G bass note there. But I'm implying um, a dual harmony there, both the, the E minor, because the bass, and then the G, because I've got that in the lower bass register too. 
So sometimes chords can be more than one thing. Many times they are more than one thing that I'm doing there. And then, um, you know, you'll notice at one point I've got, I do a little filigree when I come up to the... Um, So there I was doing, I'm basically, that's just off a G major scale. Actually, that's just a G major seven, but instead of going, I'm doing, you know. So it's actually all G major seven, but you'll notice part of the reason that it sounds so colorful is that I'm changing, I'm going, I'm ascending and then descending. So ascend, then descend, ascend, descend, ascend, descend. So, I'm so that's kind of a cool thing to do when you're working on your arpeggios. When you're working on your arpeggios, once you get them under your fingers, try to play them in different, you know, invert some of the notes and you're going to automatically sound more musical because this, not so musical, but this, you see, and then I just added a little bit of a, a rhythmic figure. By the way, I go into, um, a very in-depth study of arpeggios in my uh, Mel Bay book, uh, Guitar Arpeggio Studies on Jazz Standards. So if you're interested in really digging into arpeggios and seeing what you can uh, do with them, uh, I highly recommend um, this book. But uh, in any event, so that's one of the things that I'm doing. And then another time after I come up... I think I did. So there I did... There, I'm just using, that's just a G major scale, part of a G major scale, and I'm keeping the G pedal there. I'm using the harmonics, I can grab them. It takes a little practice to go back and forth between playing the open, you know, playing harmonics and then fretted notes, but it's really just a question of listening and adapting the sound so that you keep the volume the same, because you don't want... You don't want, you know, or, so you just have to work on it. Okay, so there, there I'm just, work. again, just using the G major scale and keeping that pedal, the low G pedal, and that, and sometimes I, and sometimes I put in the open uh, G and B string, and again, I can play them as harmonics or as fretted notes, parts of an arpeggio or part of a scale. Uh, so that's some of the improvising that I'm doing on that. And then um, on the ending of the piece, I want to talk to you about something kind of cool. And again, this is another pedal point. Um, a pedal point is so important, or pedal notes, uh, when you're playing solo guitar because it fleshes out the sound. And uh, for the non-musician, they'll, they'll go, oh, wow, that's cool. Mimi sounds like there's more than one guitar play. And that's the whole point of it is that you're able to create this sense of fullness. So for instance, I think when I come up, I am not doing So I've actually got two pedal points there, or two pedal notes. I have the open D string, and then I have the high G. And I'm going G, A flat, G, F. Those are the chords. Why am I going to the A flat or the F? Just to add a little color around it. And again, I could choose to hit the, the harmonics there. But so again, I've got two pedal, two pedals. And that's, again, a, just a really beautiful way to round out your sound and to create a sense of fullness. Now I'm going to play a jazz classic called Blue Bassa. It's one of my favorite pieces, and this is also on my new recording, This Bird Still Flies. <laughs> Thank you. 
I want to talk to you guys about some of the ideas that I'm using on this jazz classic blue bassa. So one of the things that I'm doing is you'll notice that I'm playing the melody in a, in a creative and kind of free way. The reason for that is that I'm having to put the chords in with the melody at the same time. So instead of going the actual melody, But that would sound like there's, where's the bass player, where's the piano player, where's the rest of the band, as opposed to. So when you're, when you're doing an arrangement and you're playing solo guitar, you have to get the chords in with the melody and it becomes something of a, almost a conversation with yourself. And so sometimes. So there you'll notice I played I played I played a little bit of a C minor line uh, to flesh out the sound of the chord. So there's nobody playing going nobody's playing that no one's playing that bass line behind me, but I'm able to create a sense of that by playing some of the notes. Again, here we go. And then I take my time getting to the I play a whole chord. Again, this is another stretchy chord that uh, that uh, I really like to use because um, you know these stretchy chords. Here's an A minor stretchy, a D major stretchy, a, a G major stretchy chord. They're basically what I'm doing is I'm playing a triad and then adding the nine to it. Um, and this will be a hard chord for some of you to play at first. So play it. I re recommend you try it higher on the neck. Here I am in C minor. It's the same voicing. A C minor add nine, F minor add nine. But what I'm doing is by playing the bass notes with it, it's creating a sense of it's creating, you know, a sense of fullness with what I'm doing. So again. And then notice I hit the low bass note there. For the F minor to create a sound as if the bass player was there. So even though I don't have somebody going, I don't have a bass player and I don't have another chordal person behind me, I'm able to flesh out the harmony by doing some of these kind of um, polyrhythmic kind of things that I'm doing there. There I improvised on my own line. I don't remember what I just did, but <laughs> there's a slight impro Im Im improvisation on my own line, so varying my own phrase, but the, the, what I actually played was... There it is, and then... And again, I'm putting... There, the melody note... Da I'm harmonizing that with the chord, D minor 7 flat 5, or D half diminished. And then a little bit of tension there with the G7 sharp 9. People play that chord a lot up here. I'm playing it down here. And then that E flat minor with an 11. A flat 13. There you'll notice I'm playing the melody. Nothing wrong with that, but listen to how much more, um, well, for lack of a better word, hip it sounds when I play the octaves. So that is one of the, um, you know, in addition to putting chords in with the melody, playing the note in octaves. So anything where you're able to flesh out the sound of the melody note by putting in the chord or, or playing it with octaves or double stops, any of that uh, is a really good way to reinforce the melody and make the sound fuller, okay? Um, another thing that I'm doing at one point is um, I do some muted lines, and this is something I use a fair amount when I'm playing solo guitar. You know, 
Yeah. So there's implying almost like a bass sound. But by muting it, it's giving it another color. So whether I'm pulling in harmonics, whether I'm playing octaves, whether I'm fleshing out the sound by putting the chords in between, or whether... Or whether I'm putting in uh, muted bass lines, these are different ways that you can create um, a fullness and create some interest when it's just one person playing, you, or in this case, me. So that's, um, that's another idea that's well worth uh, exploring.